And that's why I'm worried it's going to have to get really low and cheap before it starts doing that. And everything, I think, is going to have to get... Hello, everyone. Today, macro analyst Mike McGlone is our guest as he explains what is in store for the U.S. economy as the fence war on inflation heating up and more rate hikes are expected. If you're as excited about exploring the fascinating world of cryptocurrencies as we are, hit that subscribe button now. Don't miss out on our insightful discussions, market updates, and game-changing insights that could potentially shape your financial future. Remember to give us a thumbs up if you find our content valuable. Your support fuels our passion to keep delivering top-notch videos. And hey, why not spread the knowledge? Share our videos with your crypto-curious friends, family, and fellow enthusiasts. But I, I, I think the thing I can bring to the table right now this morning is we just got off our macro meeting and it keeps tilting. You know, we have all our major people in BI who don't have positions. That's a cool thing what I do. I've been both buy side, sell side, trader, non-trader um, is we're not, I'm not really allowed to trade. So we have very open views. And so Anna Wong says, we're going to have a recession by the end of the year. Yes, we're delayed. Expect negative retail sales this week and expect deflationary forces just to start be get getting started. That's cars and rent. Our um, equity strategy says the stock market's consolidating. We get that. Ira, or, um, Ira pointed out that um, the Fed's unlikely to cut rates. Um, Ira Jersey, our mortgage strategist said record, we have record low mortgage affordability index. And then um, our, our equity, our FX strategist said that um, for, we need a dovish adjustment for the Fed for the dollar to stop. So what I, I like to add to that is I see overwhelming forces now on top of risk assets. And Dave said it, that I don't see any chance for the Fed to pivot away from this. They have an 800 pound grill on top of the market. And that is, if you just look at the baby step, the next key meeting is not September, but November is there's a 40% chance they're still gonna hike rates. The key question is what takes that away? Maybe they don't hike. The bottom line is risk assets going down will take that away. Maybe, but as Dave said, if it's, unless there's a credit event, there won't. But you know the best way to have a credit event is just to have a lower tide. So I look at this as the key thing in the macro is this is all, what's the best leading indicator on the planet? What's it doing again on this Monday morning? Bitcoin is right near, if you close here, where it was this morning, it's going to be the lowest since June. And I completely believe that I'm probably going to write about it, partly because there's still disputes, but there's like there's no other asset I've ever seen that doesn't close down and trades all the time, and it had the mo it's the best performer ever during a, a most historic event ever when we had zero interest rates. So I like to tilt over to, I'm getting a lot of people pushing back in my call for crude oil. I'm still very bearish crude oil. I like to point out, well, here's a good bear market. The average price this year is the same as 2007. I'm like, oh yeah, well, why should I be excited about that? So here's a good bull market. The average price for gold is the highest ever. Well, okay, well, I guess I can get excited about that. Give me a reason for that to change. So in the macro, um, I see what's happening here is epic historic. I mean, we, we all know that and we're, I'm looking forward, looking at this, look at it for 10 years from now, what's happening is just look at CPI is going to be the story this week. It's going to come out around 3.6 or so. It's right. 3.2 core is going to be 4% means the fed can't cut, um, cause it's their rate, right, their targets 2%. But if you look back the last time they started cutting during the, the, uh, in 2007, right before the financial crisis, CPI peaked at 5.6%. <laughs> it's much lower. It's almost half that now at running 3%. Yet they started cutting rates. Why? Because as Dave mentioned, there was a credit event kicking in. This to me is going to be the biggest credit event of our lives. And it's just getting started. And the bottom line is the Fed is still hiking. So I look at people saying they're getting bullish cop. I'm like, okay, well, Good luck. Fed's still hiking. China is still tilting over and there's have a major shift there. And then you look in the macro. OK, that's a problem because they must with their best customers. They have complete lack of confidence internally and for good reason. And then you look over at Europe. What's the entire continent of Europe? The PMIs are all negative below 50 and they're still hiking rates. So this is what you'd expect. I think in the tail end, the biggest liquidity pump in history that's still dumping, and this is early days. So yes, I've been early, but a few months from now, this should get ugly. And if it does, yeah. I, and I hope, and here's, I'll end with this. Dave and I started this bet, right? And that is that um, I think it was um, steak dinner that what gets 
first. 42,000. I'll buy either way, by the way, if you guys okay. just invite me. <laughs> it's one of those things, I hope I lose. I don't have a vested interest in this. I have a vested interest in overall being right in the long term, not being an idiot and losing my job and act coming on your show and act like I know stuff. That's my vested interest. <laughs> it's true. I mean, I'm not going to deny it. But so that's a bet. I hope I lose. But I can't see, I can see crude oil doing it, going back to it was before um, COVID, around 40 bucks. I can see S&P 500 going back to around 3,000. Yes, those are far away from now. But in a normal recession, with the Fed still tightening, it's never happened. Okay, but it's probably going to happen. And what's the fastest horse in the race? Why shouldn't Bitcoin do the same? So yes, I know the macro. So I'll, one thing also is the most widely known, assumed, accepted trade in the history I've ever seen of markets is, yes, it's bullish for Bitcoin when all these ETFs launch. And then I always go back to Benjamin Disraeli, what we anticipate seldom happens. To me, it's indisputable that Bitcoin's the most significant um, leading lint indicator in the history of mankind. And I'm going to, I got to say with, for people to dispute it because, you know, that's part of what I do. But, and to probably add to that, well, all kinds are a little bit more the high beta leader so far but i want to start with one key statistics i'm not just bearish i'm bearish all risk assets i mean literally all of them um because of what's happened historically i'm i'm saying 10 years from now if hopefully i'm alive or 100 years from now how are we going to view this period in history and that is most people who've been trading bitcoin and cryptos for 10 years don't realize how historic it was zero interest rates negative interest rates in europe still still in japan i mean it's global and that's change flip of the dime particularly leading in the most the largest countries. So I want to start with this, 2.5x. I'll give you that statistic. That is the two-year note yield in U.S., how much it is higher than the average of, the weighted average of the top three um, other countries combined, China, Japan, and Germany. Now, I said weighted because Japan's a bit distortion because it's so low, but if you take Japan, China, and Germany, their total GDP is about the same as U.S., um, yet our rates are 2.5 times higher. That is an accident that's breaking already. And you're going to see every day that goes by, you're going to see scrambling to do something about it. Like we saw this morning, China's trying to do something. Japan's trying to do something to help support their currencies. It's just, it's the force is overwhelming. It's not going to, you can't do anything about it. To me, that's what's breaking in the short term. So the key thing is you got to get the monkey, the 800 pound grill off the back of all risk assets. And that's the Fed. And I just look at baby steps at a time until you at least see the first sign that they're not going to hike at the next meeting. They might start cutting. And if they cut the first time, the first time they do cut, which is it's not going to happen. That's the crash. It takes, it takes two years. So this is how different and how unusual this is. So if this doesn't happen the way I think it's going to, I'm so happy to have to write those textbooks and I'll look like, yeah, I was completely wrong. All those lessons. But this is where we rope in the minor things like, this morning, you look at Ethereum down almost 2%. Well, that's just the day. You look at compared to Friday, the down lower, because we only have one day here. But um, I, that's where the macro is so overwhelming, so significant. And that's one thing I do enjoy when people say, I've been doing this for 20 years. Like You have to have been doing it at least for 30 or 40 years and experienced bear markets. Because 20 years means 2003. That was the best time ever to buy. Because what happened was in the back of a very bad bear market that collapsed, massive liquidity. And boom, it's time to buy. And then we had the crisis during 2007, 8, 9. Massive liquidity. I just keep looking at markets rolling over, still rolling over. The Fed's still hiking. It, it's not that complicated. Turn off CNBC, two your notes at 5%. Thank you very much. See you in two years. We're going to find out, and we haven't even seen it yet, what happens when the tide goes out in this most significant period ever of what people do, what they shouldn't have done with Airbnb and buying buy new homes and VRBO and all that's starting to roll over. But one thing I want to turn over to is a little bit what Dave said is one thing that I think I'm at least ahead of the game on is trying to predict when markets start showing divergent strength or weakness. And I completely agree with Dave. I have for a while that Bitcoin is going to trade more like risk off asset treasuries and gold. But the signs are it's not. It's still actually doing the opposite. Until I start seeing signs of that again this morning again, it's it, it might take a while. And that's why I'm worried it's going to have to get really low and cheap before it starts doing that. And everything I think it's going to have to get low and cheap before people realize, OK, this asset, which is unstoppable, unlimited demand and increasing, um, I'm sorry, unlimited demand, increasing, uh, decreasing supply 
it's gonna it's gonna at least show those signs of strength. Show me the B first, and that's again, I, I just look at it in a two year basis. It's down what uh, thirty something percent in the stock market's base clean change. <laughs> it's like come on, this is it's down. Okay, Bitcoin's down forty two percent. S and P's unchanged on a two year basis. On a one year basis, same. It's still underperforming. You have to risk adjust that. So typically, Bitcoin used to be ten x the volatility of the stock market. Now it's like two to three x, depending on which index you're looking at. It should outperform on the way up and outperform the way down. It's underperforming on the way up and it's still out, under, uh, outperforming on the way down. At least show me signs of that divergent strength. It's not doing it yet. Maybe when the ETFs are launched, yeah, but that's a known known. We all know it's coming. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Mike McGlone. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.